to get some nuggets as well. Hey, great morning. Happy Monday. I don't know if you got your workout yet, but I did. And I'm feeling great. I was sick for about two weeks. Uh, it was a flu, but it only hit me like a cold because when you're healthy, your body gets over things much faster. Shout out to Herbalife uh, and apple cider vinegar. And living a healthy lifestyle. But now today was like the first day I felt back in the groove. I don't know if you ever felt that, but I felt good today. And I hope you guys are feeling good. Today, we're going to be listening to a guy named Eric Warre. Uh, he is a network marketing professional. He's helped with the Direct Selling Association, which is the governing body of uh, network marketing. But what he's going to be talking about today is to somebody that's been successful in network marketing to another level. And whether you're a coach on the team, whether you're, you know, an Herbalife distributor, or whether you're just a client, this is going to be general life knowledge. He's going to be talking to a younger guy who actually started his career. He was a personal trainer. He ended up dropping out of college because he had to pay his house note. So he's going to share all these things with you because whether you're a distributor or not, whether you're, you know, even on the Herbalife products yet or not, it's still great life tools. So get your notebook, get ready to uh, share some of your, uh, you know, takeaways and uh, let's get it. Let's get it. Shout out to Susie. Yeah, shout out to Susie. Let's get it. San Diego, Cherry Valley. Who else is out there? Los Angeles. I see Margarita. That's a cool first name. Let's get it, you guys. Uh, without further ado, let's get into Eric Worre. You, um, your, your other, do you have brothers or sisters? Older brother, younger brother, younger sister. Okay, two brothers and a sister. Um, how about them? And they're growing up. Do they have the same kind of uh, aspirations as you did? Yeah, yeah. We've got a, I think we've got a smart family. Both my brothers are engineers. My sister went to the uh, same college, same program I did in kinesiology and, and has a health and wellness background as well. So we've all done, done our time through the post-secondary system, some more than less. Uh, my sister and I did two years. My brothers did five. Right. Okay, so you, you, you get out of uh, high school and you, you go to a couple years of college. And then what happens? What, what was the next step for you? I went straight from college right into the workforce. I started working as a personal trainer and I was planning on doing a third year of college, but I decided to buy a house instead. So the deposit for tuition was due the same day as the deposit for a down payment. And I had a decision to make. I went with the down payment and just started working, which looking back was a, I'm quite happy with that decision. So I started working as a personal trainer and I loved helping people and being part of that journey but I also realized that it probably wasn't the best or the ideal long-term plan for me. I, I was making twenty-five to 30000 a year, split shifts, early mornings, late nights, basically when someone else isn't working, I was working. So I had enough foresight in my early 20s to be open-minded to looking at other ways to earn an income, which is kind of what led me towards network marketing. Yeah, I see a lot of people that are, get involved in uh, <clears throat> personal training, uh, the fitness world. Yep. And they're a little bit trapped by their passion. Yes. You know, they're, they're so passionate about it, they do it for free, and they end up practically doing it for free. Well, most do. You know, they're, they're out there, uh, and, and it's, you know, you can't, like, really own a particular thing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard to, to kind of own a, a niche within that space. You just have to work hard. You're yep. trading time for money, helping people, and that can be rewarding. Um, but, like, as you said, it, it can also, for somebody with bigger goals and bigger dreams, it can be a little bit limiting. Yep. Um, so you were open-minded. So that caused you to... Take a look. To start looking. Yep. Um, now, were you actively looking or just were you open if someone was going to share something with you? I was actively looking <laughs> after I was introduced to uh, a network marketing opportunity meeting. A friend from high school, just we got together over Christmas, said, come take a look. I don't know exactly what he said, but I went to support and just take a look. I didn't really know what I was You're looking at. You're just being at. a good friend. Yeah. And it was very intriguing and I was interested. I went to a few other meetings, but I decided I didn't want to go that route. So my interest was perked and then I began shopping. So I went to a few different meetings and... So what did you, you just, uh, the, the product wasn't for you or something? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't, I didn't buy into the whole picture and I, and I just grew up my parents, they taught me, like, if you're not all in, then it's, it's not worth being 95% or 99%. So I wanted to be all in on something. So I started shopping, started looking at a couple different events, uh, meetings, companies, and it, nothing really fit. But I was still excited about the opportunity. So at every meeting, I was ready to buy the big kit. Right. Uh, but I, I never did. <clears throat> I always just slept on a little bit and kept looking for something that ideally fit. 
And through that, uh, I came to the realization very quickly that, so I grew up around network marketing products, but I didn't know it was really network marketing. My parents weren't builders when mm. I was growing up. And so once I started looking, they, uh, specifically my mom was, was not exactly super thrilled with the direction I was going because she's thinking if you want to do network marketing, you should be you know, partnered with us and you grew up around this stuff. But, oh, I uh, see. but because I never seen it as a network marketing opportunity, I just saw products and I didn't really, really know. I was not exactly interested. And as you, as I, as you and I both know, however we're introduced to something is how we think you know, we have to do it as well. So I saw my mom as a practitioner in a clinical practice it didn't fit for me as a young guy. So I just began looking for where I could fit. And eventually I realized, you know, I use the product anyway, I recommend it. This, this probably would be the best fit. And they showed me how to kind of replace my income. So mom was a little disappointed. Yeah. And, and my, my dad was much more along the lines of let him make his own decision. They weren't dis disappointed in your decision to be entrepreneurial. No. Or be involved in network marketing. Uh, they just wanted you to work with them. Yes. Ah, I see. Yeah, I, that's natural. I could see that. I could do that. Oh, well, if you're gonna do it, why not come over here? Yeah, it's it, like looking back. It was probably almost the biggest form of rejection. We talk about dealing with friends and family and how that can hurt the most. Mm. And having, you know, your son, who you know they they've been giving me lots of products all throughout my childhood. So they had invested a lot in me, and they and, and they they knew you know there's a good potential there. And it probably also didn't help that the company I was potentially excited about was not one that they held in high regard. So. Uh, yeah, eventually I came to the light and it's been a great partnership. It's been really good for them to have that extra income that we've been able to provide and sure. it's, it's an interesting it relationship. Out. It did. It all worked out in the end. <clears throat> but you needed to kind of um, stick to your guns a little bit. Yeah, and hindsight, like as a kid, I realized that anyone else could have told me about it and I probably would have been lis listened and one of my friends did tell me about it. But hearing it from them, they had tried to tell me before, but I was not open-minded hearing it from them. You, yeah, sometimes you can't, you, you can't hear certain things from the people family members to you. or your close friends. You just, you know them too well. There's too much familiarity. Yeah, fortune's in the follow-up. They, they followed up with me a few times. <laughs> well, everything seemed to work out. Yeah. For everybody, right? Yes. So you finally make this decision. Say, okay, I'm going to do this. Were, were you, did you start part time? Were you still doing your yes. personal training? Yes. Yeah, I just, I still fit in that kind of role of using it as an additional service, products with the training, and you know whatever I was doing, I try and work them in somehow. And then it reached a point where I was earning enough part time. I had some rental income from renting some rooms in my house that I. I kind of replaced my personal training income and I'm very fiscally responsible. So I always was making sure I had a good savings account. And it reached a point where I wanted to take it a little more seriously and, and having that job was not conducive to that. So I reached a point where I just had to either go all in and make a decision. So I decided uh, Canadian Thanksgiving, beginning of October, that I was going to- Beginning of October what year? Uh, 2011. <clears throat> 2011. I decided, you know what, I'm going to, going to give my notice and I'm going to go Notice to who? To my employer. Said, oh, you, you I was worked still working. for a, for a personal training yes. company? Yeah. Oh, so I, I was a, freelance. yeah, no, I was a, a private personal trainer. It's a complete <clears throat> private facility. So I was employed and I just worked within the facility. So I gave my, my employer's notice three weeks, said November 1st, I'm out. I'm going all in with my business and... Yeah, that, that was a... What do you recommend for, for you, you, it sounds like, how much were you earning in your network marketing business when you made that decision? Probably an average, like 800 to 1,000. 1,000 a month, and, yeah. but, but you had some rental income. Rental was, income. How so much was the rental income? 1,000, 1,200. Okay, so you had that plus a little bit of savings. Yeah. So you had a couple thousand a month as a little bit of a safety net. Basically covered the mortgage, <laughs> and then I had some savings I'd been working on, just. You know, I, my parents told me right. we're not paying for your college, so I paid for all my own college. I just learned to save money and to spend it wisely. And so my thought process was if I, if I quit my job and I go, and go this route, if it doesn't work, I've, I can sit on this for a year, year and a half, whatever, and then I got to go and get another job again. But it, the upside to it is if I made it work more and I made an extra couple thousand or whatnot, then I didn't need to go back that route. So it was kind of like, 
was just looking at what the pros versus the cons were and right. it worked out. Yeah. So, so many people in network marketing, the reason why I ask is so many people in network marketing are part-time people. Yeah. That <clears throat> what, and, and I'm, I'm a little bit like you. When I first got involved in the profession, age 22, I jumped in hard. Uh, after like 30 days of still trying, I was selling real estate at the time, it was my last yep. job. Um, after like 30 days of trying to do both, I went, oh, this is, uh, I didn't Not like it. Work. I didn't like it at all. I, I didn't like my mind being divided that way. So I just decided I'm gonna, I'm gonna leap and hope the net appears, right? Yeah. Um, so I burned my bridges and I went. And it was a good decision for me, but I'm a risk taker <clears throat> type nature. of a person. Yeah. Do you think um, Do you think it's necessary for a person to to make that leap and go full time in order to be successful in network marketing, or do you think they can do it part time? I think they can do it part time to a point because I know if I had kept my job, that was still in my mind my plan A. This is a plan B, a supplemental. So I didn't really lock down myself and my business until I kind of burned that bridge and, and went all in. I, if I had stayed at my job another six months, a year, I, I wouldn't have had the same results. I know it. And you know maybe we'd be sitting here a year from now and having a, a similar result whenever I made that decision. But for me, it, it reached a point where I had to make a choice. The focus was worth it for yeah. you to be able to just t totally lock in. How about people in your organization? Do you, do you, what, what do you recommend for people? Our, our demographic is predominantly younger parents, middle-aged parents, and so a lot of their big motivation is first just to earn enough money to be at home maybe with their kids. And so it's a, a delicate balancing act, but for most of them, this is still secondary income to their household, and if they can just earn enough to cover what their childcare would be, then it's a good decision for them. And then it's balancing the full-time job of being a parent Ver and and their business, which is right. even even harder than a job, I would think, because you've k kids are a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> we're not seeing. I don't got any yet. Not not any yet. You're you're uh, you're uh, newlywed still. Two going on two, two years. years. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, all right. Well, great. Well, that's uh, it, I just think it's an interesting topic to talk about because the people who decide to really go after it, and the people who decide to kind of inch towards it and, uh, and, and develop more belief and develop more skills as they go. I think both paths can work. Yeah. But it, I, I also agree with you. At some point... It, it reaches a breaking the, point. The cost of focus hits a, hits a point where you just say, well, I'd rather just hit it. Yeah. Let's just go. And I think so long. But you, but you, were, you were responsible before that. Yes, I was, I was not you had, you had putting my financial money. situation in harm. I had a you nest had a egg. Plan. Yes. You had a nest egg. As, as a young man, you had a nest egg. You had some savings. You had the ability to be able to withstand some months yep. of, uh, of no income if that would happen. Uh, right? I figured if after a year it didn't work, I'd go be a trainer again. Like, yeah. There's more than enough opportunity for someone who's sharp and wants to put in the work and I, I took my job seriously then, just like I take my business seriously. I treat everything the same way, and I think if you if you treat everything and with 100%, you'll you'll find success in whatever you choose to do. Right. So you you make the 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 decision. You give the notice. Three weeks go by, and then you launch. Tell me about that initial first 30, 60, 90 days. It's probably actually anticlimactic because I went from having somebody dictate my schedule and having that control to diving in full time to me being the boss, mm -hmm. which was a, a very interesting adjustment that is, I don't think you ever really get over. You're used to somebody telling you where to be what and to what do, to do. Exactly. So when you're managing everything <clears throat> yourself, it was really easy to either put something off or procrastinate a little bit. So I had a, I'd, I'd say for the first two months, I was more unemployed than an entrepreneur, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and then January comes around, it's more of a New Year's resolution, I'm gonna really hammer in. And so I just tried to be active. So I did anything possible to get some exposure in the marketplace. Uh, I started doing different expos and events, anything I could to get some exposure, which... Keep yourself busy. Yes. Because at least if I was out of the house and I was meeting people, I figured this is a good 
scenario for success. So you're giving yourself a chance for something good to happen. Yes, I, f I felt more productive. So that uh, I love your diagram of you know some of the, the limiting self beliefs of doubt and worry versus action. Mm -hmm. So the more action I took, all the other limiting beliefs went away. And one of the, I did an event in January and it was a, a mom and baby expo, which was well out of my comfort zone. Young guy, no kids. I'm not a mom or a baby. <laughs> so so it, was a, it was an interesting event, put me way out of my comfort zone, which was a good thing. And I met uh, some great people at that event, which led to some home events. Mm. Like, I didn't understand the power of a home event and how easily they might be to replicate. And some of those home events really went well, got some great enrollments, and it kind of carried a momentum forward. So I just kept doing more and more of those, trained those out, had great people come on board, and... We, we had really good success first six months. I, I generate, I probably doubled my income in that first six month period. So by, by the time you got to six months in, your first two months, you probably didn't make very much. No. The third month probably didn't make very much, but you made some contacts. Yeah. And ever since, so ever since January of 2012, every single month I've consistently enrolled at least one new person in my business personally. Mm -hmm. I think my career average is like two point seven five or something so i just consistently tried to bring in people right. model that example and then train others to the same thing so the, after six months your income monthly income was about how much from your network probably about fifteen hundred to two grand fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month after six months yeah so you're on track yeah right so you're like okay powerful love it a little different today but what i'm excited to share with you guys whether you're a coach on the team or whether you're not, is I want you guys to listen to some of the things they were talking about. So one of the things that really jumped out of my head, you guys didn't hear in the beginning, but uh, that young gentleman is a million dollar income earner with their company. I don't know which company he is, but he's a million dollar income earner. So successful at what he does inside of network marketing. So <clears throat> a couple of things that really jumped out to me is number one, he was looking. He was a personal trainer. He had actually stopped going to college because his house payment and his tuition was due at the same day, and he chose the house payment. But he also started seeing his job uh, that working hour to hour wasn't going to get to his dreams that he had for himself and his family. So the reason I share that is because that's a, that's a conclusion I came to, too. And even for me, I went the medical route, I went to uh, physical therapy school, I got my doctorate, I was working in, you know, clinics and skilled nursing facilities and all these kind of places that for me, I thought go to school, get a career was solid. And I was making great income. But number one, I didn't have any time. I didn't have any time as a young single man. So if I didn't have any time as a young single man, how the heck was I going to have time with a partner? And how the heck was I going to have time with a partner and children? So these are already some things I started thinking about. And then I also started thinking about if I want to make more, yes, I can do more. And I did that. I got a part-time job. I got a weekend job. But then I also got taxed more. And the little bit more I got versus what I had to pay in taxes and versus all the, you know, bills I had because I thought I went to school a long time. So I deserved to have a nice place. And I deserved to have a nice couch. All that went towards that stuff. So at the end of the day, I was like, it wasn't even that big of a difference than if I had just gone to get a regular job and skipped some of that extra schooling and that extra school bills and maybe had a little bit more time to myself and my family and what I wanted to invest in. Because really, you guys, that was one of the biggest things that really intrigued me about network marketing was the time freedom that is available if you work it. Now, my first month as a distributor with Herbalife, I helped 10 people made an extra $1,000. Now, I'm not saying that to try to recruit you because most of you guys are already in Herbalife. What I'm saying is that I helped 10 people in 30 days. It didn't take me 30 days to do it. You know how many hours that is? Maybe it was an hour per person. So 10 hours out of a 30-day month, an extra $1,000. Now, to replicate that in a job, how many hours would I have had to work? Not to mention the commuting time. Not to mention the lunch break that had to be there anyway. I don't want to do lunch. I want to work and get home. I want to have lunch at my place. I want to have lunch at where I want to have lunch. I don't want to have lunch in this stinky old cafeteria room. I don't know if these thoughts ever came through your head, but they sure came through mine. I was like, I don't want to be here, but I got to be here, right? But that's why I was looking. I don't know why you were looking. Or I don't know why you could be looking, but I know that's also why he was looking. So he started looking, and then this is another key thing he said. 
he said it, it was in his culture to know that 95% didn't pay off. He said, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it all in. And I feel like that is the secret to anything you do. You heard him say, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're 100%, you're going to be successful. He knew that even if he failed in his business, he could go back to personal training. The job is always going to be there. And if you work hard and you give your 100% in everything you do, trust me, a job's going to be there for you. They're going to welcome you back with open arms. They're going to be, thank God you came back. So don't worry about that. The only reason you need to worry about that is if you're lazy and you don't work hard. And if you're on Triple M Monday Morning Motivation Live or watching the recording, it's probably not you. So you ain't got nothing to worry about. But he said 95%, even 99% doesn't pay off. You got to be all in. And that was really powerful. And then he said, <clears throat> I really love this one. I'm going to leave you guys with this one. He said, everything switched for me when I stopped having my business and network marketing be my plan B, and it became my plan A. And I feel like that's the shift in all the successful people I see in, in any network marketing business, in Herbalife especially, because I know them more intimately, Roxy and I work with them. The people who treat this like their plan B get plan B results. The people who treat this like plan A like they're thinking, you know, 2020, I'm not going to be going to a job anymore that I don't like doing. That's not going to be in my future. They already start to plan their future around their career and their Herbalife business. All right, so this year I'm going to be this level in the marketing plan. This year I'm going to be earning this much. This year I'm going to be helping this many people. This year I'm going to be able to schedule my day like that. I'm going to be able to work from home and help people and, you know, and watch my children grow up. Last thing is, Child care plus time with family, child care savings plus time with family plus the extra income. How powerful is that, you guys? That's what he said. A lot of his team is young couples or middle-aged couples uh, with family. You guys know how much child care costs? It is expensive. So let, let me just leave you with this before I pass it to Roxy. You go to work. Let's say you make... $3,000 a month after taxes, like 2200 2300 right? And then you pay child care. What's the average? Three to 500 a week? Is that average or more? 600 I've heard, 1000 I've heard. So you're going to work, getting taxed, spending time commuting there and back to come back to pay the person that you just went to work for to pay to watch your kid, and then you got to do it all over again. It's crazy. So if you had an extra income opportunity where you could stay home with your child, you're automatically making about an extra 500 a week from childcare savings, not to mention commuting time, not to mention maintenance on your car. And then you make an extra on top of that. And time with your family, watching your kid grow up, instilling the values that you want. Mind blowing, you guys. My, when the first time somebody told me how much they pay for childcare, I was blown away. Because for me, I come from a military background, so I my parents got military childcare. You know, it wasn't the greatest. It was a nice little teen center thing, but they got childcare taken for them. When I went out to civilian world, because my dad left after three years in the military, and then in middle school and high school, I was with him. I started hearing about other people's childcare days. I was like, "How much did you pay?" They were talking about. 500 a week. I was like, what? It was crazy. I never, I was like, how do you do it? It didn't make sense to me. So you guys, so powerful rocks. Hit us with some shares. What you got? All right. Hello, everyone. I want to see the messages. Yeah, let's see what everybody. 375 a week. Damn. That's a lot of money. That's an extra paycheck right there. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Canadian exactly. Thanksgiving. I knew you were going to say something, Drew. Oh my let's gosh. Get it. All right. So for me, some of my biggest takeaways was in the very beginning when the guy, too, I, I, it's not even the beginning, but he said, you have to go all in. You, and then Eric Gorey said the same thing. When I decided to do network marketing, he said, he, he's like, I decided to just go all in and jump in. And especially, I think a lot of the people inside of, inside of here are Herbalifers, which you guys, if you really like truly want to take this on, like that's all it takes. You got to go all in and stop giving yourself like, excuses and at the end of the day it's just like whenever you put excuses out for yourself like the only person that you ever lie to yourself when you're letting your excuses come in the way is yourself 
that's that's it the only person you ever let down is yourself you know like whenever people tell me oh they come to me with excuses and excuses i'm like girl boy i'm gonna go no matter what so either you come and you make your goals and your dreams and whatever it is that you want like like come true or regardless whether you come or not i'm still gonna go my life is gonna be great i'm gonna be taken care of why because that is a mindset, you guys. You have to go all in for what you want. And if your family, if your parents, if everybody that you love is still not taking care of the way that you want to be like able to take care of them, then you can't just be sitting your ass on the couch. Like you just gotta get to work. And like the guy said, you gotta be be willing to expose yourself. You have to be willing to get out there and talk to people and learn exactly what it is that you're gonna be doing to to get your product out into the marketplace, whether it be through social media, whether it's gonna be out like in the community, whatever it is, and this comes out down to whatever, even you can have your own business. I don't know if any of you guys are business owners, but regardless, if you're still a business owner, like people gotta know about your business and how are they gonna know about your business if you're not out there doing the work so people can know about your business and they can know who you are. So that was it, and last one, he said in six months, he was making $1,500 to $2,000, like in six months. But again, it all comes down to the work ethic. It all comes down to who you're talking to. It all comes down to what it is that you're doing on a daily, like day-to-day -day basis. Because if, for instance, if you have a business and you've been in for over, for over a year and you're not making nowhere near $1,500 like to $2,000 and like really you're fooling yourself. You know you're not doing the work. So at the end of the day, you guys, just do the work and whatever it is that you decide to do, like just go all in, just go for it, and those are my biggest takeaways. Powerful nuggets. Let's get a few live takeaways. Give me a thumbs up or a smile if you're excited to share your takeaway. Thumbs up or smile. Everybody's taking in the nuggets deep. I like it. I see a lot of thinking, good thinking. Thumbs up or a smile if you're excited to share. Everybody's thinking deep. I like it. There we go. Armani, what you got? Give us a nugget. <clears throat> What's up, you guys? Uh, my name is Armani. And one of the <clears throat> takeaways I had um, I gotten from today was he had talked about that before he quit his job, he had enough savings um, stat like stored away that he already knew if he was going to take his business full time that he had a certain amount to live off just in case. So in a sense, it was more of like a safety net. But it was uh, like, I need to go all in or I'm a burnout. So he really, he had a lot of um, fire to fuel him to go really hard in those six months. And it was super, um, it was really dope how he talked about going to keeping yourself busy by going to expos, to meeting people. And it may not pay off right there. Like three months, he had a lot of leads. And then in the six months, he doubled his income. So it was really nice to see of like putting in the work for three months at a time and then the six month boom, all the eggs hatched. So that was a super dope nugget. Yep, that was powerful. Uh, having a safety net of your savings is crucial no matter what you do. Even if you have a job, you guys, a job can fire you at any time or go out of business at any time. And if you have, think about a, le a table with one leg, how stable is it? I just had a girl, you guys, who, who she just got started with me and she just messaged me and she just said that her job is going to be closing. So she's going to be out of a job in the next 30 days. She's like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, well, I got the opportunity for you. And that that's the thing, like with the, with the job, it's never secure. You know, it's never, ever secure. And just like Armani said, like a lot of the times too, like when we're out there exposing ourselves, we don't see our work like rewards, like right away, but know that within 90 days, six months, if you're out there doing the work, like it's all going to, it's like you're planting seeds, you're planting seeds, you're planting seeds. And then like, you're going to look like, look up and then you're going to have these trees, but it takes like the fertilizing of the soil it takes the planting the seed, taking care of it, taking like watering it in order for, for you to reap yeah. the benefits. Nice. Let's get one more takeaway. Give me a thumbs up or a smile if you're excited to share your nugget from today. I'm seeing a lot of deep thinking. Let's get Canada because you shouted out Canada. Drew, what you got? Give us a takeaway from today. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if I'm being volunteered or being voluntold. <coughs> Man, I was just thinking when you guys were talking about um, the the amount that you pay for childcare. <coughs> excuse me, I pay three seventy five a week per kid, and I got I got one in daycare. My three year old's in daycare right now, three seventy five a week. 
and I got my 10 month old. He's about to go in and we got another baby on the way coming two months. So we're pretty crazy. We're getting it done all in one shot. But um, <clears throat> the one thing you said is like, if I can be home, then I don't need to really, I don't need to spend that money. If I could be home or if my wife could be home, we, we can save that. So realistically, a lot of people work just to pay off their daycare, which is pretty insane anyway. So if one of us is home, then we're already making that. That's an income as it is. But then if you can supplement some more income on top of that, then I mean, that's pretty crazy too. And I mentioned to someone the other day um, in one of our groups, the distributor groups, that she was saying that she's not really looking forward to going to work because she wants to stay home and, and contact people and all this kind of stuff. And like I said, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on parental leave right now, but I'm going back to work. And I go back to work in February, and I'm going to use that as an opportunity to be able to contact people and share kind of my, my uh, excitement for this um, to be able to reach out to a lot more people. But even though right now it looks like my job is my plan A and this is kind of a plan B, in my mind I'm thinking this is my plan A and my job is my plan B. And I'm doing that until I can completely commit to this because it's kind of like a, I'm going to flip it to be able to use that to be able to continue to talk to people and stuff. But then once I can you know, cut out of that job, I'm going to be saving more money and making more money. So I'm going to get it double. So anyway, Powerful. Until old. saving money <coughs> and making money and spending time. My man said 375 a week per kid. You guys, they're about to have three kids. That's a thousand dollars a week. That's $4,000 a month. So if you at home, you automatically up $4,000. Then you make an extra, you know, what did he say? Six months, he was making 1200 1500 on top of that, and then time with the family, and then yeah. no commuting, no maintenance on the car for that community. You guys, we used to drive like $1,500 to $2,000, 2,000 miles a month. Then when we started working from home, cut down to like 500 miles a month, if that. So imagine the less work on your car. Imagine the less time in your car. Studies actually show that longer commutes are uh, correlated with less happiness. Why? You're sitting in the car. You're not really able to relax. You got to do that before and after work. Think about that. Like I heard story, like uh, studies actually show that. Check out the studies on commuting effects on happiness. You guys, you got the ticket. I'm fired up. Whether you're a client, whether you're a distributor, whatever it is, Start looking for your freedom. That's the one thing I'm going to give it to you. Yes. Whether it's Herbalife or something else, your, your passion, whatever it is, start looking for your freedom or whatever freedom looks like to you. Maybe freedom looks like moving up to the next level in your company or your job so you get to say, hey, some days I'm going to work from home or I'm going to do satellite. Whatever you want. Let's get it. Pay these nuggets forward. We're going to be working in some of these with Triple M <clears throat> because one thing that we've started to recognize is we can, guys, we can get you pumped up. We can get you pumped up with, let's do it, let's, let's fire it up, and a lot of push-ups happen, and we getting push-ups in. But no changing of our mindset to further our mission in life and also to create more freedom is really happening from that. We have to have equipping and inspiration. We got to give you tools and mindset to grow yourself and inspire you to do it. But we can't have one without that. You can't have dry, yo, man, just talk to people and work on yourself, that's not gonna work. But you also can't have, yo man, it's just, we're about to kill it, it's Monday. That doesn't work by itself either. So we're gonna be throwing in nuggets to grow yourself, grow your business if you're a distributor with the team, because really, when you're growing your business as a distributor with the team, you're changing lives, and that's what Triple M is about. You're helping people. That's what it's about, you guys. So uh, Chrissy from LA said, don't stay complacent, take action, let's move up in life, we deserve it. Yes. Le leave you with this, action, is greater than doubt. You doubt, get in action. You doubt, dude went to a mommy and baby convention. Come on, man. That's why he's a million dollar income earner. He said, you know what? I'ma just try it. What's the, nobody's gonna chase you out, you guys. Nobody's gonna be like, what the heck are you doing? Nobody, everybody's in their own world so much that they don't care what you're doing, but they are looking for something. Even if there was a thousand people there and 2% of people were looking for something, how many of those moms are looking for what we just talked about with the, you know, the daycare and they're like, how the heck can I stay home? They about to send me back to work in a month. And those 2% of a thousand were like, yo, I don't care what the, who brings it. I'm not caring about the messenger. I'm caring about the message. 
And he was there, like. I just think, like in Canada, I, I think uh, Drew has mentioned, like I think they get like a year. Moms get a year here in the states. I think it's like what ninety days or less. It's like uh, it's three to six months. It's crazy. On top of that, you maternity leave, you get fifty percent of your pay. Fifty. They cut your check in half. Crazy. And then you got to go back to paying the child support or to paying the child care, and then go back to work. So, let's get it. I'm excited. Don't forget about the dads. And the dads, bro. How many dads are there? I said moms because it was a mom and baby convention. But the dads are probably there, too. Let's get it, you guys. Have a great one. I'm going to take everybody off mute. Give us some energy. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, everybody. Have a great Monday and a great week, you guys. I was about to yell, but.